All right, so we're going to take a look at a JavaFX program that will have a slider and a button on it, and it's part of uh, Lab G for this edition of the uh, 2021 uh, yes, winter semester of uh, 1021, okay, the Java programming, object-oriented programming class. All right, so what I've done is I've opened up a JavaFX project in IntelliJ, and I've set it to JavaFX uh, version 15, although it also works under... Uh, version 11. I've already set up the configuration over here and I've tied in the library. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to paste in right here a uh, an example uh, code um, solution uh, for the lab right in here. Now if I uh, compile and run it it should pop up a window and that window will be a little Java uh, JavaFX window with a slider and a little text box and a button. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this box. We're going to modify it um, using, um, well, some JavaFX uh, programming components. All right, so here we go. So it's now going to be loading up and running. And there we are. Here's our window. And so we have a slider in here. And then there's the possibility of writing stuff. And then there's this button that we can press as well. Okay, now in JavaFX, there's a bunch of things that we have to include. And down at the bottom here is this uh, primary stage business. And, and the stage is basically uh, the JavaFX way of saying, this is where I'm going to be um, demonstrating things. That this, like, a, like in a show, right? Like a show, there's a stage, there's a scene that you have to set. And, um, and in here, what we have is we've got a box. Okay, you saw that box earlier. And there's going to be a row that has a slider on it. Then there's going to be below it a row with a button. Okay, so there's two rows that we have to have that we're going to have on here. We space things out using set spacing and set padding. And then we say that the box has children. And we're going to add to these children row A, which was defined over here, and row B. Okay. And then um, we're going to set up how big the box is, 400 by 200. And you can change that, right? So like, like for instance, if I go like this, if I go 800 like that, okay, now I'm going to run it. And what you'll end up seeing is that the box should be wider. All right. So I can do that. I'm just going to run it right now. Hopefully it's running. And, uh, and so it'll be a wider box. And you can also make other changes like should the slider row be above the button row or should it be vice versa? Those are things that can be set right here. Okay, row B versus row A. Now, here's your wider box. Okay, so you can you can modify these within um, the overridden start method. Okay, that's possible. Now, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to work on the button row. We're going to make some changes to the button row now. And in lab G, the lab that we were supposed to do, um, the um, th there's supposed to be a, 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 a task of binding the text property of the button so that when the text field is empty, the button's text is uh, labeled as disabled. Otherwise, it says it's enabled. All right. Well, how do we go about doing that? Well, let, let's explore a couple of things right here. So the very first thing that we wanted to do was, was show you that, well, we've got this button, okay? We've got a button right here. It's a button object, and it's going to have a button written on it. Well, let's, what if we wanted to make it different than that? We go like this, button dot set text, like that, okay? And you can see that IntelliJ is prompting us for the things that we would want to put in here. And we go like this. We go set text, um, my super button, like that, okay? And I'm going to put semicolon right there and I'm going to run this thing. Now one of the things that that distinguishes these object oriented programs from a procedural program is that well the order doesn't really matter so much. Okay? Like in procedural the order really matters. In object oriented not so much because the the sort of the nonlinear ways that things are um, connected together, okay, and interconnect especially in graphical user interfaces. All right, so you can see that already I was able to make my super button right here. Okay, the label has changed. Now, if I, I've got this line right here. Okay, I'm gonna comment that out. 
we have this uh, right here, which is basically saying that if the text property of the text field, okay, the text field is that, that text box right there. If it's empty, then disable the button. All right, and we saw that it was disabled. If I go and I comment that out right there and run it, you'll see that the button is not disabled anymore. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna open up that little Java little program and that button isn't disabled anymore. It's, it's there. So that's an important thing to, to point out that, you know, there's these, these things that we're, we can do sort of in a single line right here by connecting up things together. In this case, the button with the text field, all right? And we're connecting them through something called bind. All right, so that's that's a, a feature of JavaFX, these binding of different um, objects and, and sort of properties together to make them very reactive, okay? Um, now, let's see what else what we can do. What can we do right here? So let's say that we wanted to, for instance, we wanted to uh, change things uh, if, the, if the button was pressed with the mouse. Okay, so let's say we go set on mouse, oops, um, released, like that. Okay, and then uh, let's say we want to change the, the text on the button. So we go button dot set, set text, released, like that, oops, like that. And then we want to say as well, button on set, on mouse pressed. We're going to go button dot set, oops, set text pressed. Okay, like that. Now, I didn't do that quite right. See, what I need to do is I need to uh, set this up so that's value, and I'm going to do a little lambda thing like that connect them up and that almost I need to put boundaries on my lambda like that and I need to put a semicolon there because that's basically a lambda is an inline function okay this right here is an inline function it's a function that's put into a special little box right here, okay? So we're gonna be taking the output of this function right here, basically, running it through value. And I go like this. I'm gonna run it. Okay, so a button, I'm gonna press it. It says pressed, then it's released. Pressed, released pressed, released. I press somewhere else in the window and nothing happens. I press there. Okay. So you can see and it's reactive and it doesn't matter if I put this line first and that one last. Okay. It doesn't matter. These will still be connected and they will react just like you saw right there. Okay. So we've, we've looked at that. Now let's, let's take a look at this business of binding the text property of the button so that when the text field is empty, the text, the button's text is disabled. Otherwise, it's going to be enabled. Let's take a look at a couple of different ways we can do that. All right. So um, one way to do that would be like, let me see. Mm, let's get there in a second. How about this? Let's go like this. Let's take a look at, um, if we go text field dot text property of the text field. Okay. And we're going to go and um, we're going to do something called add listener like that. Okay. And we're going to say observable value. And we're going to say old value, new value like that. And then we're going to go button dot 
text property like so set value and let's see that be new we're going to take the value that is appearing in text property we're going to pass it over like that okay hopefully it'll run So basically we should, with this, we should be able to dynamically update the button text based on the text that is going to be in the text box. Okay, so basically we're making a link between the text box right here, which is my text field, and the button itself. All right, and that's what I did right in here. Okay, so we're getting towards what we want to do right here. We want to be able to look at what was going on inside of the text box and make a change. So here's one way to do it. We go text field like this, text property like that. And we're going to go, whoops, not there, dot add listener. Okay, and then in here, we're going to go observable value, old value, new value, like that. And then we're going to put a lambda. And the lambda begins there and ends there. It is an inline function. Okay, so it, it behaves like a function. So we can put an if statement, for instance, I go like this, if new value, okay, so what we want to do is we want to say if, if the text box is empty, then, then let's do one thing. And if it's not empty, let's do something else. So we're going to test the new value um, length. We're going to go like this. We're going to say, whoops, length like that. And we're going to say, if it's not equal to zero, then do something. And then we're going to say else. If it's not that, then we're going to do something else. So if it's if it is zero, let's go button dot text property like that dot now there's all sorts of options in here like lots and lots and lots and IntelliJ is great at giving us sort of suggestions for things really the one that I want is let me see I want it to set value I want to set value to the bot buttons text property like this and I want to say disabled like that and then as well I want to go button dot set disable and you can see right here it says set disable boolean b it means that I can give it a true or a false in terms of setting it to be disabled so in this case I want it to be disabled so I'm going to say true right here all right so IntelliJ is helping me prompt for things all right and over here I want the opposite I want button dot set disable false like that and then I want a button dot text property dot set value and what's the string I want to say enabled like that okay that is basically saying that I want my text property to be listened to okay the text box needs to be listened to and then Basically, I want to pass on any new value that's occurring inside of the, the text property that's being listened. And I want to pass it in here. And I want to say, if the length is more than zero, basically, or if it's different than zero, then say it's enabled and turn on the button. And if it's zero, turn off the button. So let's run this. Let's see what happens. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm running it now. And so it's compiling. And, and when it pops up, let's, we're going to test to see if typing in values into that window right there, um, into the search bar, not the search bar, but the, the text bar is going to actually change things in terms of the button. So I press on here. Now I pressed in here and nothing happened to the button. But if I go A, B, C, D like that, then it changed because the contents was non-zero. Now I'm going to erase it. And it has disabled itself. Okay. So that is actually pretty decent, okay? It, um, it works. Now, 
I'm now going to uh, block that out. I'm going to go comment with a block comment. That's all blocked out. What's another way of doing this? Uh, there's this bind business. Okay, so can we bind? So what I just did here is not binding one to the other. It's using listeners to, to do that. Let's see if that we can um, we can actually set it up so that it, it does the binding. Now this is a little bit weirder. Okay, admittedly. So if I go button dot text property dot bind. So I'm going to use the bind keyword here. Now inside of the bind keyboard keyword, I'm going to go bindings dot when my text field dot text property dot is empty. Oh, there it is. Empty right there. All right. Um, then disabled dot otherwise enabled like that. Now it's asking if I want Java FX beans binding bindings and the answer is yes. So I'm going to go, uh, let's see, option and enter. Did that work? It didn't. Okay, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to try and, and write it in right now. So if I go like this, I go import Java FX dot beans dot binding dot bindings right there. Okay, that should be fine. Hopefully I got that right. There's some red right there, so I'm, I'm suspecting that I didn't type it quite right. Yeah, so I got a little bit of an error here. Okay, let's try and fix this. Button dot text property dot bind bindings dot bindings dot let's see right here when text field text property that dot is empty oh yeah that's why there I forgot that that uh, particular parenthesis right there all right oh I'm missing a semicolon there it appears. Let's try that again. No, hold on. This one's a little on the complicated side. We'll get this. Otherwise enabled like that. There we go. Okay. I had the parenthesis in the wrong space. Okay. So there we go. So we've got it basically enabled and disabled like that. Okay, so we now have that set up. And so what we're gonna to want to do next is move up to the other, right? So what we did here is within the stage business, we are looking at the button row. Now we want to look at the method, whoops, the method for make slider row. And that is up here, there it is right here. Okay, that's the method right there. And we're gonna look at that in the next video. Take care, everyone.